This is not contained within the clinical prediction rule for a cervical radiculopathy. That's only the median nerve tension test. However, if somebody has a cervical radiculopathy, the ulnar nerve tension test is still warranted and can give you good information. Other conditions where this is warranted would be pain radiating to the fourth and fifth digits, which is the ulnar nerve distribution, thoracic outlet syndrome, and also cubital tunnel syndrome. Now, before we get into the actual maneuver, this image right here shows about what the patient's arm will look like at the end of the ulnar nerve tension test. You'll notice here that the wrist is an extension, and then several of the fingers are an extension, specifically digits three, four, and five. Out of those, you really need digits four and five, okay? You don't need digits one and two at all because that's not the ulnar nerve distribution. They don't innervate digits one and two. So you really need to make sure you get digits three, four, and five. One way you can do that is before you go through this progression of movements that we'll see in a minute, just have the patient make an okay sign like this. That kind of gets digits one and two out of the way and leaves digits three, four, and five for easy pickings to move them into extension. So I always start by having the patient make this okay sign. So right here, I'm fixing the scapula in depression, preventing it from moving up. I just commanded her to make the okay sign. You can see her first and second digits there together. And now digits three, four, and five are exposed. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is put the wrist and digits three, four, and five into extension. So I just grab onto those fingers and that's pretty easy, right there. Now they're in extension along with the wrist. Now the ulnar nerve tension test is the only one of these where you're actually gonna be in elbow flexion. So once I get that wrist in digital extension, I just need to make sure that the elbow stays relatively flexed, okay? It's already flexed, but I can certainly flex it even more. Then I'm going to induce shoulder external rotation. Now in this position already, we're already in some external rotation, but again, I can give a little bit more shoulder external rotation. Okay, like that. And then I'm gonna move her into shoulder abduction. So essentially what I'm trying to do is make that hole created by her first and second digit with the okay sign come close to her eye or her ear, something like that. So here's shoulder abduction, and there's approximately the final position for the arm in the ulnar nerve tension test. Now these rules down here for a positive test, those haven't changed. If we're just simply looking at nerve tension, so adverse neurodynamics, all we're looking for is an increase in familiar nerve symptoms. So do they have nerve tension in the ipsilateral shoulder and or upper extremity? So basically nerve tension in the arm. That's all it takes to be a positive test for adverse neurodynamics. But again, sometimes we wanna rule up a cervical radiculopathy, so we need to involve a neck movement. So again, at any point in this progression of movements right here, once they have sufficient neural tension, we're gonna ask them to side bend away from the affected side. So contralateral cervical side bending. There's that right there. If it is more cervical in nature, so a cervical radiculopathy, let's say, that should increase those nerve symptoms. Conversely, when we have her side bend toward the affected side, so ipsilateral side bending, that should actually reduce those symptoms. Again, you have the same rules here, whether it's adverse neurodynamics or cervical radiculopathy for all of the nerve tension tests. But remember, only the median nerve tension test is specifically in the clinical prediction rule for a cervical radiculopathy. Let's take a look at this ulnar nerve tension test one more time in real time. So first thing is we depress the scapula. Then we tell the patient to make an okay sign and extend digits three, four, and five along with the wrist. Make sure the elbow remains flexed, give some shoulder external rotation, and then abduct the shoulder while blocking the scapula. Try to get the hole with the first and second digits toward her ear. And then we can use side bending away from the affected side or towards the affected side to rule up a cervical radiculopathy, depending on whether or not symptoms increase or reduce respectively. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.